I didn't realize when I started this adventure with the Da Vinci Color and began to relay my experiences to you that what I had on my hands was a story in three acts. And this is act two. Which, for those who don't know, uh, a story in three acts, act two is where everything kind of falls apart, but it's okay because there's an act three coming where everything will come back together. So that's what I meant by that. Because I don't want people to think that I'm getting down on stuff in this video. I, I, I want to like relay positive experiences, but at the same time, I want to be transparent and tell you, and so this was my experience. Let's just, let's get on. So where to begin? Well, immediately after the last video was recorded, and it's been a month since that, since that last video was recorded, I held off editing and, and, and bringing you that video until just a week ago because, well, because immediately after I recorded that video, I continued to work with the, with the DaVinci Color. The first thing I did was plugged in my computer, loaded up XYZ Maker on my computer, logged in with my XYZ printer account, which makes me wonder if the printer will work if XYZ printer goes out of business. And that would make me very sad if that were the case, but never mind. Uh, XYZ Maker on my, my computer and I set up the Wi-Fi on my, on my DaVinci Color and that got set up just fine. Put the printer in its new home, on the pallet that it came on, off the ground, in my shed. So that's good to go. And then I loaded up XYZ Maker and sliced the model and threw it at the Da Vinci Color, and the result was an error message. USB dongle access failed. Now, I'm no slouch when it comes to technical things, so whenever I see an error message, my first thought is, let's see if we can tech support this sucker and get rid of it. But I didn't know what this message meant. USB dongle access failed? It sounds to me like either the USB port is bad or the USB dongle that I had saved the file on was bad, which was the USB dongle that they sent me. So the first thing I did was I tried taking that and moving it to a different USB port. This printer has two of them, one on the top, which I assumed was for the Wi-Fi, and one on the inside, which I assumed was for the file. So I took the Wi-Fi dongle out and I put the USB port in, uh, USB thumbstick in, and I tried printing again from there. Same thing, USB dongle access failed. So the next thing was to try my own USB thumbstick. So I took the file and I put it on the USB thumbstick and I plugged it into the first port, USB dongle access failed. Plugged it into the second port, USB dongle access failed. At this point, I'm perplexed. I've ruled out that it's the USB port. I've ruled out that it's the uh, USB stick itself. Maybe the whole motherboard is bad. Maybe the USB controller is bad. I don't know. So the next step, of course, is to Google the error message. And when I Googled this particular error message, I discovered that it was not the USB port at all. Apparently, other people have had this problem. And any time that the, the main board reads the file and can't understand something that it sees in the file, it says USB dongle access failed. Basically, that error message means I don't know what to do with the file that I am reading off the USB dongle. It could be a much better error message in my opinion. And the problem was that the firmware that was on my, my printer and the software that I was using on my computer to make the, to prepare the model were not lined up properly. Uh, one of them was behind and one of them was ahead. So the first thing I did was I updated the software on my computer to the latest beta version that I had access to. USB dongle access failed. So then I started to fiddle with the firmware and I updated the firmware, uh, trying my best to get through their, their firmware update process, which was a little bit weird. Again, I'm on the beta side. And they have fixed this. Now the firmware is updated through their software. But nevertheless, uh, it didn't do anything. So I, I got another firmware update and I ran it again. And this time the printer didn't recover. I bricked it. And maybe I bricked it because I was updating using the wrong firmware updater on the wrong firmware. I thought that I was doing it right, but it might have entirely been my fault. 
So I contacted the folks at XYZ Printing and they very kindly sent me an all new motherboard with some very delightful instructions. Look at this cute little message. They made a little picture out of the back of it and made a personalized little message. It's adorable. And this had all the instructions for replacing the, the motherboard from this printer. There we go. And so I got a, a whole new motherboard and I cracked open the back of my printer using my specialty security safety tools that you can't buy in most stores and most people don't have a set of these. And again, do I wish that DaVinci went with a more open source solution for this instead of requiring special tools for this? Yeah, but fortunately I had these tools and the capability to replace the motherboard. Now, pro tip when replacing a motherboard that has a lot of connectors. Take a piece of masking tape, wrap it around the wires as you remove them from the main board, and write on that masking tape which port they go into because almost all the ports of a motherboard are labeled in some way. And if you put that label on a piece of masking tape on the wire, it makes it easier to put it back together afterwards. So I did that. And now I've got this extra motherboard that I don't know what to do with. Though I will say the specs of this motherboard are impressive. It is much more overpowered than any other 3D printer I've ever had. They definitely did not need to put as much power into this motherboard as they did, but they did to give themselves plenty of elbow room to play with and, and make this printer do as much as they want. And I actually super respect that. So once I got it all back together, went through the whole calibration process again, made sure that everything was neat and tidy, and it went much faster the second time. And then I fired up XYZ Maker again and threw a 3D model at it. And this is the 3D model that I threw at it. Uh, this is a 3D scan of a young lady that I took who had Thor's hammer and a really cool cape on. There's a problem with the scan. It took a big chunk out of her head, but uh, I wasn't going to worry about that. I just decided I was going to take this scan as is, throw it at the printer and see what happened. And what happened was a mess. Turns out we're still working with a 3D printer and even with supports, if you don't have good adhesion to the bottom layer, don't expect a good print from it. But hey, it's a failure with color, so that's something. So I took and edited the model, gave it a flatter base to put on, put my logo on the base, because why not? And then threw it again at the printer and I was super excited until this is what came out. It's almost solid black. There's no distinguishable features. The geometry is there, but this was really what I wanted to be able to do with this color printer to take scans of people and then print them out and, and give them, hand them a toy of themselves. I can't, I can't use this. This is not acceptable. This is just, this is just terrible. I tried a couple of different iterations. I tried a couple of different things. And yet the result over and over again was the same, just black washed out there's a little bit of color in here but for the most part this is the opposite of a color print this is just a black print i can't what am i supposed to do with this thing at this point i'm pretty discouraged i'm thinking this printer can't even do what they say it can do Fortunately, the people at XYZ Printing are still willing to work with me at this point. And they said, well, have you tried printing out just a test color print to make sure that your printer can work? Take one that we know works, which I had never done. So I grabbed a, a really cool test print off of their website. I tried it out and the result was better. A little ray of hope. Look at that. This printer can do color. It can do really good and vibrant colors as well. This is this is not no slouch. And I was able to use this to double check that I had, in fact, when I reconnected the motherboard, put everything connected properly back together. Where it's supposed to be blue, it's blue. Where it's supposed to be red, it's red. And where it's supposed to be green and purple, it's green and purple. So the colors work. But why, why then couldn't I get my scan, my print to work? Well, at this point, we're gonna leave it here and leave the rest of this discussion for act three, when things start to turn around and turn out 
pretty good for the Da Vinci color. As always, I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I want to thank my Patreon backers. Notice, hey, there's some more Patreon tiles up there. I'm getting you guys, if you've backed recently, your own tile printed up. I need to get some more like autumn colors in there. It's a little bit too cool right now, but I'll work on that as we go forward. But as always, I want to thank you very much for watching. Remember, safety first. I'll see you next time. Do you want to know more about 3D printing, but don't know where to start? Or did you buy a 3D printer, but you need some help getting it going? Don't panic. The beginner's guide to the 3D printing galaxy is here, now, for you. Buy it on Amazon.